Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Tim Anderson here, the appraiser's advocate. Thanks for watching. I think you're going to enjoy this one. We've got a special guest. She's relatively new to appraisal, but she's making rapid progress. She's a thought leader, and you're going to be very familiar with her name over the next couple of years because she is going to the top as quickly as she can. Welcome, Allison Rodriguez. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Doing great today and honored to be here with you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, before we get into the meat of all this, um, uh, people are going to have questions. They're going to say, Allison, I just completely disagree with what you said, or, hey, that's a fabulous idea. So please let us know, uh, number one, your your company name so that we can recognize that. And number two, your email address uh, so we can get in touch with you. Sure. Well, please, everyone. I'm always open to feedback and questions and happy to help. So my my company here in, in Texas is Ardent Appraisals, and my email is, our, is Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N, at ardentappraisals.com. And that's A-R-D-E-N-T. Okay, ardentappraisals.com. Okay, and we'll repeat this when we get to the end of this thing. All right. Now, Allison, um, you and I have spoken before we turn the recorder on, and we've known each other for some time, and we've talked about various topics. So basically, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about various topics. Okay, this one is general. Uh, you're, you know, you've been in appraising for a little while. You do have your own company. You do have your own clients. Uh, you have experienced the joys of real estate appraisal, <laughs> as well as the pains of real estate appraisal. As you look into this, as you consider where your company is, where your company's going, what is it about real estate appraisal that keeps you awake at night? Gosh, oh, a lot to unpack there, but I do have to say it's, you know, certainly for me, you know, and, and it's the really complex appraisals, the complex, you know, valuation problems, but but I, but I actually enjoy those. I wouldn't want to do the same thing over and over every day. Um, I think that's one of the things I love about this. And, and in that luck, thankfully, it doesn't keep me up all night because like I said, um, you know, growing, growing my company, but also, um, you know, partner with another company, you know, out of um, Kentucky. And so I do, we are able to solve all kinds of, you know, very complex valuation problems. So in talking, you said you you partnered with another company out of Kentucky. So as a result, what you've done is put yourself in a situation where when you run into a problem, you don't have to handle it by yourself. You can you can say, well, no, no, here's a good idea. Let me run this past somebody else and get somebody else's view on it to see if that solution is what you want to proceed with. Do, do I understand that properly? Yes, that that's that's correct. And and I just can't, you know, we cannot do this in in silos, in silos. We cannot practice in silos. And so I think that's one of the best things that I've done for myself and, and for my business and even for the new folks in my business. Um, you know, they're able to collaborate as well. And so we can again take on complex valuation problems and and we're able to get, get clients, you know, um thorough reports and and help everyone make better decisions okay all right now uh, in the context of, of of making better decisions in the last oh last three years uh real estate appraisal has uh, oh, and still is facing a number of challenges and some appraisers are having trouble adapting to those challenges and the changes that it's creating. What changes do you see in residential real estate appraisal that are upcoming really quickly that are going to be important? And what changes do you see upcoming down the road that are going to be really important? Gosh, I mean, like you said, Tim, it's, and even since I've been in the, the industry, there's been so many changes and it's, it's the whole, you know, change or be changed. I mean, you know, you've kind of got to adapt or, or you'll, you've got to step out. Um, so definitely being adaptable, but big changes that I see, you know, um, with 
the both the NAA and ATA that I'm involved with were were already getting uh, we're already aware of new trainings that will be coming up as of uh, January 1st of next year. You know, regard with regards to bias. Let me jump in here. Please tell us what NAA and ATA mean. Absolutely. Um, so NAA is the National Association of Appraisers, a national organization, you know, professional organization that appraisers can get involved with. I am on the membership committee for that. Please um, email me, call me. I'd be happy to talk more about the benefits of being involved in that. And fortunately, I am a member of the Association of Texas Appraisers, um, just elected as um, alternate uh, board director. So honored to serve in that position and also the uh, membership committee chair. So wonderful organizations to be involved in and that also bring many benefits. And I'd be glad to elaborate on that later. Um, even though I live in Florida, I was at one time a member of the ATA. So, uh, yeah, I'm a great organization. I really like it. Well, right. we Go appreciate ahead. that because the type you, Melissa Bond, Diana Jacob, you know, everyone, um, we, we appreciate that, but, but yeah, back to big changes, if that's okay. Um, things coming out, you know, we know that we've got, um, training that will have to be done a seven hour training. So every, all appraisers need to be prepping for that and, and seeking out where they'll be getting that education, that'll be required. Also, we've all been hearing about this, but um, but the new UAD changes, you know, the the forms will be changing and, and that is going to be, we're all going to have to adapt. Um, and then of course, along with just, you know, modernization and, and those sorts of things. Relative to changes, re excuse me, relative to the uh, change in the UAD. This is going to require appraisers basically to do more writing uh, than, than they're accustomed to doing now. Is this going to be a problem? Are you, uh, we're going to talk about the national convention that you just attended, but was there any buzz at the national convention about this requirement to uh, appraisers are going to have to write more? There can be greater narrative content uh, when the, the uh, what I call UAD2 comes out. Is there anything out on the street about that? There's a lot out on the street about that. And that's that's a recent, you know, conventions. We hear that from, you know, we're hearing that from lenders, from chief, chief appraisers. Um, we have got to all improve on our communication skills and be able to, like you said, write and talk about, you know, talk we need to improve on market, you know, market conditions analysis, all of the the sales comparison summary analysis. You've got to be able to speak to these things, and and then of course how you were able to derive adjustments and where you reconciled. Um, they are there has been a large a big emphasis on this, and I I enjoy going to all these national conferences, so I've I've I hear it a lot. But um, they're going to ask questions, and then when you hear sometimes appraisers complaining when you know chief appraisers are asking these questions they they just need the answers and that's what i understand is going to be how it is going how it's going to be moving forward it is going to be necessary uh, for the appraisers perhaps to uh, take some classes on writing uh, which is not something we do now is it no. So I will certainly be looking to you, Tim. Um, I've got your your technical writing book, but you know, we'll be looking to you for some recommendations on technical writing class, or maybe you're gonna teach one with your experience. So Okay. Well we'll we'll see what's gonna happen. <laughs> All right. Um, you uh, were mentioning the GSEs and, and some of the demands they're making, and, although it was in the context of UAD too. Let's talk about those demands, but let's talk about them in the context of adjustments. The GSEs right now are all, for lack of a better term, excited about two adjustments specifically, the time adjustment and the GLA adjustment. So uh, again, appraisers are under a lot of pressure on this. Uh, talk to us about what you heard at that conference relative to these two adjustments. And then if you would please give us your advice and counsel on what appraisers should be doing in order to avoid further criticism in these two areas. Sure. So what, what I was, what I've been hearing from the GSEs, like you said, they're, they're, they're demanding at this point, but I, I can't blame them, you know? So, uh, but they, they do want to know, you know, how you derived it, what the, you know, like I said, the amount is, but what they are doing is again, it's, it's, 
by going and getting involved, it's amazing that you can step right up to, you know, Scott Reuter at, at Freddie Mac and he, he can, he will see, he sends out resources to help you with market conditions, um, adjustments and data. They are willing to help, but they're also encouraging you get out there, you know, whether that was, that's get out to the um, expo and go demo the folks that are there with different softwares, talk to others who also offer different softwares. But again, it also, they, you know, you have to understand what those methods and techniques are and, and that kind of thing. But they are, they're recommending that you can get out there and you, you certainly should. There's a lot of opportunity. There's a tool that I still haven't even tried that, you know, Aloft has out there and they just taught a class at Val Expo on that. So they're, and, and they're asking, they want to know the why. And, you know, if they're making important decisions based off of this data, we've, we've got to give it to them. And like you said, we're going to have to explain a lot more. I've got a, um, a new team member, she's worked with a couple of other appraisers in my office. And so we're really going down and I'm, I'm saying, you know, things have changed. Maybe you haven't seen this much explaining before, but, you know, as another one of my mentors, Pam Teal will say, I mean, you've got to pick that the market conditions up. You've got to do it a couple of ways and you've got to shake it out and explain what you did and, and how you came up with it. But, you know, Tim, I mean, it's even interesting. We talk about the, the GSEs wanting this information. I, I actually have a lot of non-lender clients. They come back with they come back with questions too. You've got to be able to explain to them, you know, your clients and your how you came up with, you know, what you did in the valuation and the appraisal. You know that my practice is I don't appraise anymore. I just work with appraisers. Now, you mentioned greater explanation, deeper explanation. And so the appraiser says, well, wh what's to explain? I mean, I made the GLA adjustment at $65 a square foot. And I put right in the report, I did the GLA adjustment at $65 a square foot. What's the problem? Well, obviously there is one. Otherwise the GSEs wouldn't be on the warpath as it were. So take a couple of minutes and explain to us what the problem is with just saying, hey, I adjusted the GLA at $65 a square foot, period, new paragraph. What What's the problem? Well, again, the problem is, like you said, you're stating the obvious. They can see that in the, in the grid, you know, if you were, it, it, and so that's just not sufficient, you know? And so, you, you know, and like Josh Wallet will even say, you know, he, he it, again, it doesn't need to be two paragraphs long, but you need to be concise and, and saying, you know what, I derived the adjustment, the GLA adjustment, you know, using, uh, maybe I use depreciated costs. And then I looked at some paired sales and here's, it's a paired sales analysis. And here's where I reconciled and why, you know, we, we need discussions on, on how it was extracted. All right. In other words, saying I adjusted the $65 a square foot period, new paragraph isn't enough. We've got to say, I adjusted it $65 a square foot and here's why, and then explain the process or processes by which we arrived at the $65 a square foot. Is that where you're going? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Not just reporting and stating, stating the obvious, you know. Okay. And this is what the GSEs are telling us that, you know, they, they may be kind of squishy on this right now. But when UAD comes out, they're going to get really excited about something like this. Is this, is this what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was even recently talking with Heather Sullivan at, at Val Expo, you know, they, we kind of laughed and we were talking about since she's going to be doing some of the new training for the UAD, you know, there's, there's kind of, it's a slow roll. I mean, they're not trying to just bombard appraisers with, um, you know, with, Hey, we're demanding this, or we need this, we need these explanations. They are giving everyone a very good amount of time for us to all go out there and do all the necessary things to improve our practice. Whether like, you know, like you said, come consult with you, consult with other coaches and, and teachers, and then get in these trainings. But it's, I will, I'm not, I'm not mad at all because they're giving everyone a heads up. So th this isn't a surprise. They're going to drop in six months. No, no, no. And, and, you know, if you want to, we've got, you know, you still want to stay in the profession and um, you're going to have to change. So Okay. All right. I like that. If you're going to stay in the profession, you're going to have to change. Okay. All right. We're going to come back to that. All right. Now uh, on a different topic, uh, a, a similar, but, but uh, uh, disassociated, disassociated by some extent. Um, if an appraiser were to call you on the phone this afternoon 
and say, Allison, you know, I'm just, I, I know there's some areas in which I'm weak. And can you recommend a class that I should take? And meaning right now, uh, is there a class that you would, or classes that you would recommend if you got that phone call? And which one and why? One or ones and why? Yes. Well, kind of to our discussions on um, on supporting adjustments, if they are feeling weak in that, there are a lot of classes out there that I would certainly recommend. And starting, you know, even even with, with you and um, with yours and Scott Collins on depreciated costs, you know, those highly recommended over at Appraisory Learning. And, and then, you know, right now, Heather Sullivan's been offering some with a loft for their tool kit as far as adjustments go. But I will say, if, if an appraiser calls me this afternoon and, and they, 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 Hey, they keep getting calls for non-lending work, but they're, and I, I've gotten this call and they're not, they're not confident what they're doing. They've only done um, lending work. So I highly recommend, um, you know, a couple of non-lending courses. Again, I'm going to plug appraisery learning. I've got, I've got a code if you guys need it, but um, Josh Wallet and Brian Reynolds teach some great non-lending classes there. Okay. Now. Much of late, there has been a question relative to college degrees. Uh, to be a state certified general real estate appraiser, you have to have a college degree. That's cut and dried. It's recommended that you have a college degree to be a state certified residential real estate appraiser, but it's not required, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And there are four or five different ways to ascend from a, a trainee or a licensee to state certified res without having a college degree. Now, my question is a little bit off center, but where do you, as someone who counsels uh, other appraisers, as someone who is on ATAs, uh, you're, you're an alternate on ATAs board, you chair the membership committee, uh, you could very easily uh, be on the board of directors of NAA if that's where you choose to go. So, um, and I, I've never asked you about your educational background, but where do you come down on that question? Does a residential real estate appraiser need a college degree? That's a great question. I, so, and, and just on my background, I do, I do have a, a bachelor's degree, but I do stand, I'm going to, I stand on, I I don't think that it should be a requirement. Like I know, like you said, it's it's up for question on the um, certified general appraisers right now. But I even think for the certified residential, I don't think that you you should be required to have a degree. Do I absolutely think that um, you know education is very important? Yes, and like you said, education on um, you know on statistics and and um, you know math and 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 also technical writing. Um, all of those things are very beneficial and college collegiate hours doing those things I think would benefit, but I, I hate to, I just don't think any, and the door should be completely shut in anyone's face because they don't, you know, to kind of as a barrier to come into the profession, because I do know a lot of excellent appraisers, um, that don't have a bachelor's degree, residential appraiser. Let's talk about your family to some extent. Now, you, you have children. They're still relatively young. But if they were of age, would you recommend to your children that they get involved in residential real estate appraisal? One of them already, yeah, she already is. She's She's been out with the laser at some times on the properties, but she gets that iPad and tries to go you know, to Disney Plus and finds the appraisal stuff. But no, I would recommend that. I know we know sometimes there can be a lot of negativity about the dying profession, um, but absolutely, I would recommend that she gets into it. I, I enjoy residential appraising, aspire to be certified general. I would highly recommend that to her. And when I was getting into the industry, I, not that I, I actually, I really enjoyed it, but not that I doubted anything, but I remember hearing from you and other thought leaders, you know, in, in various organizations and things saying, there's just so much opportunity and only because I was new and I, you know, you just don't know what you don't know at the time. And I thought, I don't know, I, I'm just not sure that there is, but now a few years later, it's confirmed. There's so much opportunity, whether that's, um, Again, whether you're doing you know, different types of lending work or in non-lending work, 
um, going up to, you know, certified general doing commercial work. Also, you can do so many things, you know, the things you can do without your, you know, appraisal hat on. And if you want to go do, um, you know, be a, a tax agent where you're actually an advocate, you know, there's just a lot of opportunity for things, you know, relocation. It's the opportunities are really endless, um, in, in my opinion. Speaking of opportunities, speaking of backgrounds, what's the most important skill an appraiser must have to land a supervisor? Ah, and I, that is a great one. And I think, I mean, I'm going to go number one is, is definitely going to be initiative. I mean, initiative and drive to, to learn. Um, I know we could, I could go down a list of absolutely. Do I think, you know, currently kind of what I'm working with on my team, Hey, we need to get in some Excel classes. You know, you, you again, it's kind of funny with age differences, some just don't have as much experience. I mean, but you know, you could go down that those. Does it it does it help to know how to do property data collection? You know, if if you have it, those things are all important, but initiative and and drive to to learn new things and to uh and to just be and uh, you know, attention to detail on that. Um, I mean, I think is is very important. And like you and I've kind of talked before. Um, knowing that there's going to be a learning curve if you if you don't have experience in it, because I do think anyone can come into this and learn. I know anyone can, but it it will the you know being a self starter that's huge because I can't I just I can't I can't make you do it or you know that kind of thing. All right, so the skill would be initiative, self starter, self starter, part. sure. Okay. All right. Now, uh, Allison, as we get to the end, let me ask you one more question. And uh, uh, yes, I'm, this is an opinion question, so, but I'm interested in your take on it because I've asked a lot of people this question. Is real estate appraisal, specifically residential real estate appraisal, a profession, a vocation, or a trade? in my opinion, and I know appraisers love our opinions, you know, here, but, uh, but I, I, I do think it's a profession, you know, I think it's a profession, um, in which, you know, we can, we, we have, we do have skills, but we also, you know, run, run businesses and there's, there's a, a lot more to it than, you know, just being a, a trade, if you will. So. I mean, what makes it a profession in your opinion. In my opinion. Um, again, you know, you, you've got to be well-rounded. You have to be adaptable. You have to be, you know, professional, a good communicator. And most importantly, you know, what kind of service do you offer um, in addition to your, to your, um, you know, analytical skills? Um, that's why, you know, I, I believe it's, it's truly a profession. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Allison Rodriguez, again, let us have your email address. Sure. It's Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N, at ardentappraisals.com. So we'd appreciate any feedback, questions. Um, welcome at all. Ardent Appraisals with an S, right? Correct. Okay, excellent. All right. Allison, thank you. Appreciate it. My best to your family. And we will be seeing each other, I hope, in the near future. And good luck with all your endeavors. Thank you so much, Tim. I really appreciate it. <laughs>